Okay, so in V-Ray, we're able to create these road markings pretty easily. So we have this and this, but how is it created? And how can we get that into SketchUp? So I first of all, show you how it's created very quickly. I'm not going to show you exactly how this material is done. You can, I might do that in a future video, but this is more how to get the road markings into SketchUp. And first of all, when I'm using my texturing, I use real world coordinates. So it doesn't really matter about the UVs, but what we're going to do now, it does matter. So simply put, the, the material itself is added in through this road markings. So the material is added onto, say, this cycle track. Then anywhere this penetrates through, we want it to have a white line. So here's a white line, there's a white line. And in the material, you add it in through this distance texture right here. So you can add, add, add this in, and anywhere this penetrates through, we're going to have a white line. Simple as that. And we use that for the cycling lane, and we use that for the, the road as well here. But how do we get this into SketchUp? So if, again, if I show you the render, this is what it looks like. But the texture itself, if I hide the road markings, doesn't have that. So that's what you're going to see in SketchUp. You can bring it as a V-Ray scene and you'll have it as a proxy, but then there's limited capabilities in how you can edit it. And you want to have as much control as possible. So let's jump into it and how do we get that for it? So first of all, we need to give it proper UVs. So if I go to the top view and I isolate the two item objects that are going to have road markings. So first of all, I'm going to select this and I'm going to make sure edge mode is on. And I'm going to, first of all, just concentrate on, let's say the road. And then you need to have UVs. See, since I was using real world coordinates, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If we go into materials and I click this texture, go down to the bottom, you'll see I'm using this, where we're going to have to use tiled instead. Um, so because that's basically how you can use it in game engines as well, if any of you have used that. So the issue is now, if I do a UV map onto this and open the UV editor, You'll see this is the UV space we work with, but this object is way outside of it and it's extremely large. Um, that's because of the UV mapping you put on it, real world coordinates. It doesn't matter where this is as long as you have proper mapping. Um, so what we need to do is we need to scale this down and map it in here. Now, if I select this and go into mapping, flatten mapping and click OK, it's like, OK, perfect. We have that in there, but it's not using the space too well. And it's going to be, we would have to have a very high resolution texture for it to look any way decent. So we need to chop this up. So what we're going to do is, in my case, I'm going to just go into the edit poly and I'm just quickly going to slice it up. So a quick slice and I'm just going to start slicing it in certain areas like this. And then I might go into edge mode here, go into connect. And let's add a few edges. Uh, five should be plenty. Now, going back to this, we need to split these edges. So I'm going to select all these edges. I'm going to go back to my UV editor. Uh, one sec. Go here, and I'm going to go to break. So now they're all individual objects. Now I can select all these, and then I can hit pack. So now. They're all packed in and we've used the UV space pretty well. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of areas in there. So now we're going to do the exact same to the cycle track. So I'm going to go back to the cycle track. I'm going to use the quick slice and I'm just sort of start cutting in areas I think we need to here. Okay, and that's, that's fine. So then I'm going to go to UV, a UV map. I'm going to go to our edges and I'm going to start selecting these edges, which are not cut. Again, select this, select this, go into our UV editor, see where we are. There we go. Break, go to polygon, select everything and go to pack, go in and we have them packed as well. So now the next step would be, as you can see, the materials are after getting extremely large because we've shrank them down into the proper coordinates on the UVs. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to go back into our actual material, select it, scroll down, 
and we're going to uncheck use real world and we're going to say seven by seven so it's tiled seven times doesn't have to be exact we're going to go down here and we're going to do the same we're going to switch this off and i'm going to tile it seven times as well something like it so it's not so ridiculous looking i need to change that for each map so uncheck this make sure it's the same tiling uncheck this and do the same for the last seven and seven okay so now they look a little bit better but of course we still don't have the markings in so we need to bake that texture in so i'm going to go to my camera it doesn't matter where the camera's set up as long as you have the correct lighting and i'm going to go into rendering bake to texture once you click that you get your you get this so we're using V-Ray, so make sure you use that or whichever engine you're using. And the map I'm going to use is the diffuse filter map. That seems to get the most progress for me. So I need to select the objects. Uh, I'm actually going to collapse to that and collapse this one because we're happy with them. So I'm going to select this object, select this object, and I'm going to go select my map that I want. And I'm going to click add map to selected objects. So now we have both these maps. The first thing I want to do is I want to uncheck apply color mapping. Make sure that's done for both of them. It is. And let's go for a 4K map. And then we want to tell it where to go. So let's go to our course files, max and maps, select the folder. And that's pretty much it. Then you hit bake. Uh, that's fine and go over right and now you can see it's rendering those things now we're using this you see the shadows come in the rgb one we don't we're not using that we're using the diffuse filter map and that will only do the diffuse so we can see we, our road markings are now being baked into the texture and based on the uvs that we created so i'm going to let this run and i'll get back to you when it's done now, once the baking is complete, this is what it should look like. You have your UVs uh, baked out and you have your lines and your textures in both of them. So now I've simplified the scene. If I go back to max, I've simplified the scene just to have this texture and this texture and the rest just have a physical material. Now, we're not using the V-Ray material, so I've actually made everything else that, <clears throat> excuse me, that isn't these two a physical material. And if I select this and this, you'll see that these are both physical materials too with that new texture applied to them. Because there's no need to have the other texture, we have this now. So if I was to look at this, we have this texture placed into our base color. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go select all this, go File, Export Selected. And we're going to name it this FBX, hit Save. Default settings, click OK. No warnings, hopefully. There we go, perfect. And then we're going to go into SketchUp. I'm going to create a new scene. Create just simple meters. And then I'm going to delete this guy. And then I'm using a plugin that's called Universal Importer. I'll put it in the description below that you can download and install. But when I select this one, I can pick FBX because by default, uh, SketchUp doesn't allow FBXs. So once I click that, it'll take a while and it'll open it into SketchUp. And if you look closely, you'll see now we now have our road markings in their scene. So that's one way you can quickly get road markings in and it's not too difficult and it's something that your clients could then use the 3ds Max, sorry, use the SketchUp model and look at it a bit closer in finer detail. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and I'll have future videos like this.